In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the, the Apache Cordova in-app browser as the default method for opening up all hyperlinks within your Ionic Framework, Android, and iOS mobile application. Uh, so that means that if you have HTML that you take in externally from some remote resource, uh, the in-app browser will be the default way to open those links rather than uh, trying having Ionic try to open up a new UI route for it. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a fresh Ionic Framework project. All right, with that project created, let's go ahead and navigate to it. And now we're gonna go ahead and add the Android and iOS platforms. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and uh, add the Apache Cordova in-app browser uh, plugin to our project. So we can do that like follows. All right. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and start uh, building up a sample for this. So go ahead and let's open up the example project directory that we created on desktop. Well, in my case, I added it to my desktop. And let's go ahead and open our project. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is, since we're going to be taking in uh, random HTML from the internet, we need to go ahead and add a, uh, a directive into our Angular module. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add the ng sanitize. We don't need to download anything, we just need to add it. So let's save it. Let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and create a new controller. This is the controller that we're going to use for mock-up HTML data. Oops. All right. And inside this controller, let's go ahead and create our uh, static HTML content. So as you can see, that's just some plain text. We're going to add a link. It's just going to be very basic HTML content. All right. So let's go ahead and go back. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our oops, our um, index.html file. And let's go ahead and hook up that controller. And then inside uh, the ion content, let's go ahead and show the uh, HTML that we just added. And that could be done like this. All right, so going back to our simulator, we're gonna go ahead and compile this. And then we're gonna go ahead and install it.
it always takes longer the, uh, the first time that we build. Every other time it, it usually takes a lot, a lot quicker. Alright, with that built, let's go ahead and install it. Alright. We're going to open it now. now. As you can see, it has a link, it has our HTML content. Let's go ahead and click it. You can see that it it didn't open up the 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 in-app browser. It just created a new route for it. And that's not good because the back button doesn't work. There's all kinds of sketchy behavior uh, that comes with it that we don't necessarily want. So now the actual part comes in where we're going to override default link behavior in our application. So let's go ahead and go back. We're in our index.html file. Let's go ahead and create a new script. This is just going to be a global script because we want it to be the first thing run and we want it to be just standard JavaScript, not AngularJS. So let's go ahead and add the following. All right. So what we basically added here is it's going to search our document for on-click events, and if the doc if the on-click event was related to um, an A tag, which is a hyperlink, then it's going to override the click event and call the window.open command, which is what what we use for the in-app browser. It's going to uh, insert the original uh, href attribute. It's going to open it up with the in-app browser and it's going to display the location bar. And that's that's going to be the default behavior for all links now. So let's go ahead and go back into our terminal. We're going to go ahead and rebuild the application. Then we're going to install it. Let's open it again. And let's go ahead and click it. And as you can see, instead of um, opening up in a new route or state or UI element, it actually launched a separate in-app browser window with a close button. Uh, you can either hit the close button, you can hit the back button. Either will take you back into your application. And we didn't explicitly um, add any, any special code to this uh, hyperlink. And so if you were to take in uh, HTML code from your web server or, or whatever, maybe you're reading an RSS feed, uh, it'll go ahead and override the default behavior for, for these links. There is one thing to note though, this will not work with iframes. If you are loading content, if you are loading iframes into your application and these iframes have links, the iframe will be sandboxed and it will not open inside of the in-app browser. It'll it'll continue to use the default behavior, and I believe that's because of a security precaution uh, that's implemented with, with between iframes and standard JavaScript. Uh, so that way, people can't do any kind of uh, excess uh, cross cross-site scripting. But it will work for all other um, Java all all other hyperlinks in your code which hopefully is most of them.